Hello and welcome back. So today we've got another £200 worth of 10 peas that Patrick and I are going to have a hunt through. We're looking for the alphabet ones. I'll show you what progress we've made so far. So we have got A for Angel of the North, C for Cricket, E for English Breakfast, uh, J for Jubilee, L for Loch Ness, M for Macintosh, uh, P for Postbox, S for Stonehenge, X for X marks the spot, V for villages, and Y for yeoman warder. So let's cross our fingers and hopefully we'll get a few new ones. Which pack do you want? Let's get into these bags. So let's jump into the questions. I got them on my tablet down here, that's why I keep <laughs> being illuminated. Um, my first question comes from Rory Cooper who asks, What advice would you give to young, inexperienced collectors? Um, so my first recommendation, if you're collecting circulated UK coins, is go over and have a look at the Change Checker website. And it's not because I've just started, uh, well, I've done videos with them recently. Um, it's a website that I genuinely used before um, when I first started off collecting coins. Um, so they've got some really useful information about the mintages um, of the circulating coins and the scarcity index, which will help you ascertain which are more than face value, which are less, uh, won't be less than face value, which are only face value. Um, but then also, uh, I keep telling everyone, uh, tell people you're collecting coins, friends, families, um, members, uh, friends of the family. Uh, I've had people message me on the Discord saying they're telling their teachers and they've got, the school, they've got members of um, other students looking for coin, looking out for coins for them. Because the more people you have looking, the more chance you have of finding or them finding coins for you. You'd be amazed, that I keep saying, the amount of people uh, I'll, I'll go and see and they'll go, oh, Christopher's here, here we go, empty out my purse, empty out my wallet. Uh, let's have a look at what I've got. Um, so the next question comes from Alric, who asks, what do you think about grading coins? I haven't got much of an opinion on them at the moment, simply because I've never had the need to grade coins. I mean, the um, so um, last Tuesday's video was some really old, well, not old, they were older, but really nice, um, potentially proof, or BU, I think they might be BU um, coins, um, but potentially I'm, I don't, I don't know, it, it's just it's an expenditure and it doesn't really phase me what grade my coins are. Um, what matters to me is that uh, I like the coins, it's building up my collection, um, so the, the grading doesn't do a lot for me. Because also I think the grading is probably more if you have um, very, very valuable coins or you want, um, I don't know, maybe you need insurance on it, so you need to know the grade, so you need to know the price, so you can find out the price to insure them. Um, whereas my collection, I've got, I've got a lot of coins, uh, but nothing extraordinarily valuable, if that makes sense. Uh, the next question comes from Lauren, uh, Lauren Duke, who asks, who inspired you to start collecting coins? Um, so uh, I've always been a bit of a collector of things, and I think my dad was always a collector of things as well. Um, so, and he, collect, he, he has collected coins uh, for a long time. Um, so, but he buys the the bunk packs, the annual sets. Whereas I like collecting circulated coins more than that. Although I'm sort of very slowly drifting towards um, the bunk packs and things, having bought a few of them now. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't say that anyone particularly inspired me to collect coins. I mean, um, looking at other YouTubers um, that were doing coin uh, coin videos way before me. So a lot of US coin hunters. Um, I think JD's Variety Channel was the first one, the first coin um, uh, YouTube channel that I watched. Um, and there's a half dollar make make you holler something. I think I can never remember the name. Um, but then there's UK coin hunters that have been doing it longer than me, like Absolute Coins, like UK Coin Hunt, like um, Richie's Coin World. Uh, the ones that spring to mind. They were the three sort of main um, uh, main U uh, UK coin hunting channels that I was watching, following, and then began to emulate um, in my own little way. <laughs> I like to think I do things slightly differently uh, than them, so it's a, I have my own little niche. Um, I hope that answers your question. So Mo Ahmed, uh, so that's someone from the Discord, so hello to you, asked, which of the Queen's Beasts do you like the best? Uh, again, if a coin isn't... So um, the main focus of my collection are circulating UK coins, whereas the Queen's Beasts are more commemorative. Um, although I do have some commemoratives in my collection uh, that have been sent to me or I bought through the, L through the London Mint office. So I, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head any of the Queen's Beast designs. That I saw, I did see them when I went to the Royal Mint and they do look stunning. Um, but I don't know, they don't, they don't, 
They don't speak to me in the way that uh, the other coins in my collections do. Um, but I'm sure there's a phoenix. Phoenix, maybe? Um, if there's a phoenix, I like phoenixes, so that'd be my number one. Bob the Goldfish asks, how much are 10 pence coins worth? I imagine you mean the alphabet ones. So last time I checked, they were going for like, uh, well, you can buy the, the um, uh, it was early struck, I think it's called. They're not brilliantly uncirculated, but the uncirculated ones anyway, uh, for four pounds a pop in new post offices or the Royal Mint. Um, the circulating ones, they were going sort of around the two pound to four pound mark. Um, it, it does vary because the scarcity index does change from time to time. We will, we will know mintages in March, so we'll find out whether they are all the same mintages, whether there are some with less, so on and so forth. Um, but I'd imagine they're all around the same value because we think they are um, the same mintages, or that's at least that's my um, interpretation of the information we've got so far, but that could change in March. Um, but yeah, two to four pounds. Um, I wouldn't pay more than two pounds for one, if I'm honest. Uh, next question comes from my name is Jeff Joker 21 who asks when did you start YouTube so this channel started in July 2017 um, um, well, that was when stamps were my main uh, focus of collection um, and I made a couple of videos about stamps which I've left I don't know why I've left them because they're awful <laughs> um, but again I, I had a whole bunch of them recorded uh, uploaded uh, but no one was watching and no one was interested so I, that, I, that I sort of phased out. Um, I do have about and there must be six seven more stamp videos that I recorded on my PC but that's in storage at the moment. Uh, people have asked would I release them. Uh, possibly not on this channel because you guys have come to expect coin videos from this and I'm not sure how many of you would appreciate stamp videos on this channel and also my stamp collections in storage and it probably will be until the mid, mid, late, uh, uh, mid to late of this year. Um, but that's when the channel started. The coin video started in February 2018, I want to say. So we're coming up on a year of coin collecting, actually, which is pretty awesome. Um, and in a year to get, we are knocking on, um, what we, we've surpassed, as of recording this, we, we've, we've surpassed 18,000 subscribers, which is absolutely phenomenal. And we are rocketing our way to sort of 19, 20K is off in the distance. And I'm planning, um, I don't know how much I want to say. I'm planning a nice giveaway that I think you guys are going to really love. Um, but yeah, so but um, whilst we're talking about subscribers, thank you so much for all of you that have subscribed. Um, it, it's, it means the world to me every day going on and having a check in the morning to see how many subscribers we've, I've gained or in the evening when I get home from work, especially if it's been a hard day at work. Because um, for those of you that are new to the channel, I do have a full-time job and the YouTube is sort of a hobby I do on the side. Um, if I've had a tough day at work, like today, I've been in meetings all day, so I'm a bit a bit tired. But seeing your, your lovely comments, seeing um, the likes on the videos, the messages on Discord, the emails that I've got, uh, I picked up the stuff from the PO box, which I'll give you a. I don't know if this video is going to go out before or not, but just look at all these letters. Absolutely, tons of them. Um, and so when I the, the, I was a week late picking it up because of the snow. Oops. whoops. Um, but to be handed that volume of letters, the, the amount of you that have gone out of your way to send me those letters, it means the absolute world to me. Um, and so a massive thank you to you. But anyway, <laughs> it was a bit of a tangent, but it's, uh, we, and it, I, I feel it's important to recognise um, uh, how much of an impact, how positive I feel um, when I get uh, interactions from you, messages, as I said, comments, letters to the PO box, messages on Twitter now. Um, so thank you. Right, next question. Val Pilgrim asks, what do you do with excess Beatrix Potters? So like Benjamin, ben the 2017 set, they all just go back to the bank because uh, I don't need them. When I say back to the bank, I have two different banks. I, so one I take coins out of, one I pay coins into, just to make sure I don't get the same coins uh, for two hunts, if that makes sense. Because no, I don't want to search through coins I've already searched through. So the 2017s go straight to the bank. The 2018s I, I'm keeping, just in case any of them are low mintages. Um, and then if, if they're all like massively high mintages, I'll pay them back into the bank in March when we get the mintage figures. Uh, 2017s, obviously Jemima Poddleduck is an instant keep. Uh, and some of them apparently are starting to uh, retain more than face value. So I'm a bit gutted the amount of ones that I've paid back into the bank now. Um, so I'm going to do a bit more research into it and decide whether I want to start keeping them off to the side as well. But um, as of now, but, uh, up, up to now, um, apart from maybe this week, I think um, 
so next week's 50p hunts, I did keep the 2016s that I found, apart from Tiggy Winkle, which I just <laughs> throw back in my mind. Uh, Super Heath 666 asks, how many Kew Gardens have you found? Uh, I found two. Uh, I found one on video, um, which was, I can't even remember when it was, but that is still to date my most successful coin hunt. I found the Kew Gardens, was it seven or was it 11? I think it was seven Olympics, Jemima Puddle Duck, I think there was an Isaac Newton. Um, so it would take a lot of doing to beat that uh, coin hunt. And one I found um, uh, end of January 2018. Ironically, not, I hadn't started, I hadn't been hunting through coin bags for very long before I found my first Kew Gardens. I was like, oh wow, that's awesome. Um, not realizing quite how <laughs> rare it was to look through them, uh, to, to, to find one of them. So, answer this question, I found two Kew Gardens. Next question comes from Teen or Tyne itself. Uh, does your brother help or is he collecting for himself? Uh, so uh, Patrick primarily helps, well he's, he's not been on the 10p videos and he's been in a couple of 50p videos, things like that. Um, but I mean, he when it, whenever I go through a Mint, I get him a strike your own and he keeps that. But he doesn't massively collect coins. He started, he's got his own 10p collection book as well now. Um, so if I've got duplicates that we find in the 10p hunt, I, I might give him, <laughs> so if he, if he finds a duplicate, he can keep that, but I'm uh, reticent to give away any of my other ones, but I should probably help him out because seeing that he's my brother. <laughs> oh! Hold the door. How's that? V for villages. Very nice. Um, so, Rob De Snur asks, what do you do with all your fake slash copy coins you get? So the ones that I know are fakes, I keep just because they're uh, they're sort of oddities in their own uh, sort of respect. Um, um, I've got, I think I've got like three fake two pound coins, and um, I found ones that are potentially fake fifty p's, but I'm not wasn't one hundred percent sure, so I just paid them back into the bank. <laughs> uh, Tom Benny asks, do you think they should mint commemorative coins for other denominations? Yes, one hundred percent yes. The more commemorative coins we've got, the more commemorative coins we have to find. Uh, the more videos I can make. That's simple. That was, that is what puts me off doing what one p. 2p, 5p, 20p hunts is that there aren't, uh, and one pound hunts still, there aren't commemoratives to hunt for. So uh, I know I can get territories, but chances are in a bag of 20 pounds, because the big bag of pound coins or uh, uh, pennies or two pound, uh, two peas, uh, it's 20 pounds in each bag. The ch you, chances are you'll find maybe one, if you're lucky, two um, territories coins, and that would make it a boring video. <laughs> um, and there's only so many questions I get on Q and A's to be able to. Um, do a Q&A plus a coin hunt. So that's the main reason I don't hunt them and I probably won't do uh, unless there's any. Uh, ben Foster asks, why can't you do a face reveal? Um, so this is probably from before I did my face reveal. Um, so what put me off was that I didn't feel I needed to. Um, I was quite happy uh, in the way I was making videos. However, 2019, I had some plans to do a couple of new things. Uh, going to events, going to the, well, I've already been to the Royal Mint and let you guys know, and some of you did come and see me, which was great. Um, but yeah, I've got, I had an, I had an interview uh, a couple of weeks ago, which potentially is going to be um, put into the newspaper, into newspapers or online newspapers. So I thought, 2019 sounds like it's going to be the year that I'm going to appear in media. And if I'm honest, I'll, the first place I want to appear is on my channel. Uh, I want to control. I wanted to control that. So, uh, Christmas Day, uh, 20, uh, 2017, um, I posted um, my. F I, I hate to call it a face reveal. Um, it's, it seems so YouTuber-ish, which I don't. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Ignore me. Just prattling on now. Um, um, but yeah, uh, the reason I did it was because I'm planning to be in some videos. So uh, that's why I did it. Adam John asks, if you could have any rare or antique coin in your collection, what would it be? Um, that's a good question. I can't think of any antique coin. There's the 1930, oh, coin pegs didn't tell me off of this, 1933 penny? 
132 to 37, now I'm down to myself. So there's only what seven of them minted, so that'd be a pretty awesome cool to have in your collection. Um, but I mean, the, the historical coins, although I love them, there's none on my hit list that I really want. Um, the co one coin that I do really want that's on my uh, hit list is the um, 2018 Strike Your Own Isaac Newton, because um, unfortunately I wasn't, go I didn't go to the mint. Well, I started going to the mint after that coin. Uh, had been a strike your own so I haven't got all of them but that is the number one one I'd, I'd love to have because it's my favorite 50p and to have a strike your own would be fantastic uh, so that's the that's the top of my hit list of coins I'd like to have in my collection uh, Bianca Marlin oh so you, uh, that, that's someone who, who comments on all the videos so hello to you thank you for your question asks uh, are your giveaways only for people in the UK no not at all I mean I think all my giveaways have been won by people that live in the UK but that's probably because primarily the majority of my, my audience are from the UK uh, rather than uh, not in the UK worldwide duh. <laughs> it's late <laughs> I've had a long day um, so no I'm more than happy to post it out wherever you live as long as you live on this planet because um, I don't know how I would get coins off this planet um, Archie Amory asks what's your favorite video to make that's a good question the most interesting one is the foreign coin hunt that I post on a Sunday um, because it's fascinating learning about these coins, find, holding these coins from like the early, mid, late 1800s, early 1900s. It's just, it blows my mind every time I find one of them. So just think the hands that this, this, that coin might have gone through, um, the pockets of people in his, moments in history that this coin would have lived through or been a part of uh, is quite, a, quite, quite special to me. Um, the 10 p's are always exciting to find a 10 p coin. Um, the two pounds and the fifty p is always exciting because there's always coins that we find, um, which is fun to do. I, I like all of the videos really. Um, the PO boxes are incredibly special to me. Like I said earlier in the video, even get, getting a note from you guys is just—it's—it's um, it's still bizarre. It's, it's still very bizarre to me to think that someone would want to go out of their way to write me a, a letter um, to say thank you for what for the videos or hi, I watch with your videos. Um, but I don't know. Mm, competition is quite fun as well. I like all the videos. If I, if I didn't like doing video, I would stop doing the videos. Um, the question comes from Terry Nuff, who asks, are Channel Islands coins easy to collect? If you live in the Channel Islands, then probably. If you live in mainland UK, probably not. I mean, even I, I go through tons of coins and I don't see that many of them. Um, however, um, I'm sure there are ways that you could source them if you were collecting them just to fill a, fill a collector's book. I'm sure you could buy them from eBay. Um, quite easily. Uh, Drew Boy, the RLL4 player, crumbs, asks, are you going to start collecting Australian coins? So, uh, so I'll, I'll collect any coins basically. My worldwide coin hunts, I keep all of them, uh, catalogue them, stick them on my new mister, put them in the little coin wallets into my big tray of coins. Uh, I do plan to show you guys my whole collection again. The problem is I'm not very good at keeping on top of organising them. Um, so it's a bit of a mess still, so I still I needed a day to really sit down and smash out, get them all organised again so I can show you. Um, but if I get UK, if I get non-UK coins, then of course I'll add them to my collection. Uh, so, yes. <gasps> Ooh! Well done, Patrick! No way! I got more That's the one I was asking for as well. Let's have a look. What a stunning find. Let's get the zoom on on this thing. Right. Look at my hand's shaking. Look how stunning that is. Absolutely phenomenal. Well done you. We don't want to watch look at the queen, we want to look at the queue. Woohoo! Got two. Got two today. Well done. So our next question comes from Anthony Robotham, uh, which is another name I recognise, uh, who asks, "What's uh, what's the next Alphabet 10P you would uh, that you think you will get?" The one I really want is W now. Um, I can't say which ones I've already got because. I think I'm about a week ahead of it, so I don't want to spoil next Saturday's video for you. Um, but yeah, the one I really want is W. Uh, I think the design looks awesome. Uh, Deja Vu asks, I'm interested in how you 
how you're set up, how comfortable are you filming your coin hands. Um, so I used to use my mobile phone with a like a flexi strong arm that would hold it above the coins and look down on it. I've now got a brand new camera, Canon, uh, oh it says on it, Canon EOS 80D. Um, it was just, it was recommended, it was recommended as the best one I could get. Um, so I've got a, st a tripod, I'm looking at it, I, just, I don't know. So I've got a tripod that stands it up uh, or, or, and then leans it down, but I have ordered, um, uh, who was on the Discord, Dave, uh, Dave Almighty uh, showed me um, a, a one that, go, that looks down, so it holds it so it looks down on the coins again. Um, so I'm excited to get that in the post and start recording above the video, above the coins again, and that'd be more comfortable. But yeah, ultimately I'm more, I am comfortable um, doing the videos. I mean, initially with this tripod, uh, it was trying to set it up. I think you saw the bloopers. It was awful. It was so awful. It was awkward um, the first time I, I recorded it. But I think I've got the hang of it now. Um, but yeah, we'll do one more question, which is from Lucy Robbins, who asks, how did you get into coin hunting? So initially, I thought I could make money um, searching through, through the coins, finding the desirable commemorative ones and selling them on eBay. Um, but after about three weeks, of, three, four weeks of doing that, I, was, I realized it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of time, it's quite a lot, quite time consuming, um, taking the pictures, posting them on eBay, um, packaging them, writing them on the envelopes, getting stamps, posting them, um, and then the old person would go, oh, I didn't get my coins in the post. And it's sort of like, mm, really? Because you're the only person? Well, anyway. Um, so yeah, it was too good time consuming. The margins I was making were a pittance. It was pointless. Um, for the majority of coins, some coins I would, I, I sold a, a um, Commonwealth Games Northern Ireland. Uh, so my first hunt I found one, I found two in the same hunt. Um, and I sold one of them for £32, which is a good markup, but then after you take into account eBay fees, postage, packaging, blah, 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 it just wasn't worth it. So I stopped doing it for um, uh, for resale value, but I was making videos at the time. It was getting a bit of traction. There was a whole bunch of you guys watching it. Um, again, liking, leaving comments, things like that. So I thought, well, I'm still enjoying looking through the coins. Um, let's see if how many people we can get to um, subscribe or watch the videos and see if this this sort of thing's got legs uh, and it turns out it's got legs <laughs> so um, yeah so initially it was money and then it was more that I was enjoying doing the coin hunts I was doing enjoying um, making videos that people were watching um, so oh one more question I've just seen what it is so from Jeff Solo Toys he asks what do you think of The Last Jedi so you might be able to tell a bit of a Star Wars fan um, so The Last Jedi, what do I think about it? So it is by far the most divisive Star Wars film, I would say of any Star Wars film. Um, personally, I would rate it as my second favorite Star Wars film of all time. Um, I absolutely loved it. There was bits that weren't amazing in it, but there were, but so, okay, it's the casino scenes. So I apologize for those of you that don't like Star Wars. I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant here. Um, this, the casino scene with Cat on Canto Bite, everyone says it's pointless, it doesn't have any impact on the story, blah 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 blah. Um, it does have an impact on the story, it's, it, shows, um, it shows Finn's allegiance move from himself, well, protecting himself, trying to protect Rey, to uh, being a, a fully fledged member of the Resistance. Uh, he realizes, I think it's on, the, on that planet, he, re he realizes that the, the Resistance is, is his calling, that, it, that is the side he wants to side with. Um, but yes, that's my take on that scene, but uh, I welcome your opinions as well. Um, my other problem that I have with people that dis or hate The Last Jedi, so my other brother is a prime candidate for this, hated The Force Awakens. This is too much like the original trilogies. This is just a retelling of A New Hope. Meh, 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 meh. So like, okay, fine, you have that opinion. Last Jedi comes out. This isn't, doesn't like feel like Star Wars. This is too different from Star Wars. Meh, 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 meh. It's like, you can't have it both ways. You can either, Love The Force Awakens for feeling and being essentially an original trilogy film uh, and hate The Last Jedi, or you can love The Last Jedi for it being different and hating The Force Awakens for it being the same. Um, you can't <laughs> you can't moan about it e either way. Um, so I think that answers, my, that answers your question. I, I love The Last Jedi, I love The Force Awakens. Um, I'm even a, a fan of the prequel trilogies, if I'm honest, as well. Um, I think I was the right age demographics when that came out uh, to be Jar Jar Binks fans as a kid <laughs> in the late, late 90s, early 2000s. So um, 
Um, I, I think there are, there, there's enough questions from The Last Jedi that I want answers to that I have no idea where they're going with it. Um, I cannot wait until December this year to watch the, uh, the, the next instalment. Um, and hopefully we'll get a trailer soon. Um, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so I've got a bit of a rant about Star Wars, so I apologise there, but I'm a massive Star Wars fan, absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, I think that at that point, we'll get back to the coins. So, a fairly successful hunt then, I would say. We got the letter V for villages. I like that one. It's a duplicate. And Patrick got... The Q for Q. Q for Q. Perfect. So let's get the new one into the book, I think. So... Into the book it's going to go. Let's move these out of the way. Can I ever one day put a coin in? Nope. Right. When you set up Patrick Collects... I have. You can. It's this channel. Ha ha ha. Very funny. Where are we going? There it is. Get in. No, it's not straight. Oh well. There we go. How are we looking? Three on every page. Very nice. Chuffed with that. So, what will we get next time? Patrick's back on form, finding new coins, which is always good. So, all that leaves me to do is thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time for more coins. Bye!